Yeah. You like it? Oh, we're on. Hey, um, we're just discussing my new haircut. Um, the owl, which is the topic of today. We're going to be touching on owls. Just having a conversation with my friend, the owl. Like him a lot. He listens to me. He's not running his mouth all the time. But he agreed to my new haircut. Um, even though it looks like a peeled onion, it's cool. Um, so, do you like my new haircut? You don't? Well, <laughs> I really don't care because it's not like we're going to be dating real soon, you know what I mean? Except for that one you out there. Yeah, you know what you are. So, back to owls. What about owls? Well, how many of you have heard of Canned Heat? Yeah, this album. Living the Blues, great album. Uh, the song called Reef Fried, the little rented lips. Reef Fried Boogie is what's playing in the background. I will give you a link below. But uh, one of the band members was this guy right here, Alan Wilson. He ties into um, the rediscovery of some old blues players like Sun House and. Uh, Reuben Lacey, and we're going to be talking about that. You see me in bed, relics from these people, along with Alan Wilson, in my guitars now. I just finished this book, Blind Owl Blues, by Rebecca Davis. Talks about Alan Wilson, and through that process, I've been in touch with people like George Mitchell and David Evans, uh, who knew a lot about uh, some of these people who brought. Uh, the blues revival back again, the old artists like Sun House and people like that. So, we're going to talk a little bit about this book. I'm to have you figure out how to get this book. Of course, there'll be a link below along with links to uh, the song that's playing right now. You're going to want to hear this. This is a great album. Finally, the topic we're here for. I've been working on this one, this White Owl Box forever. And um, I think that I uh, um, did an episode called Stabilizing a Vintage Box. I'm going to give you a link right up there, right about now. Uh, and you can look at that. But we got to get this one wrapped up. The artist that uh, it's going to is getting, I guess, excited to get it. That's a good thing. But um, all the reinforcement, everything inside, we're going to put the wiring together. Uh, we've got a coil pickup and a piezo pickup and some knobs and stuff. But there's some things to do in here to reinforce everything uh, when it comes to putting the neck in here and making sure that it's not glued in and we can still access the inside. So we're going to take a look at that and learn a little bit more about Blind Owl Alan Wilson. Let's go to the bench. But you know what? I'm not going to do that to you this time. Don't forget, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'm sure there's going to be plenty in this video for a metric hater to dislike. So go ahead and click it right away. And um, don't even watch it if you're a metric hater. Just click down the thumbs down, dislike it, and don't watch the video because you really want to keep yourself in ignorance. Okay, let's hit the bench. Okay, here we go. You remember this one? Um, it is. We did this in another episode, uh, reinforcing a vintage box. Um, you'll recall that we were going to put a pickup or a jack for a piezo and a jack for a coil. And so what's going on in here right now is there, this is getting pretty busy. You want to remember we've got a couple of volume controls to put here. And then the artist that's getting this requested that this little flat, humbucker isn't that nice you put it up here look it sits the level of that's really great it's perfect doesn't get in the way but I usually put these up in this area the artist requested I'm going to flip this around because the wire is going to go down here that it go in the bridge position and he's a great guitarist so he would know so I've got a couple things that I want to pay attention to here because I'm going to have to mount 
this neck to this box and I certainly don't want to do it where it's flimsy or I don't really want to glue it um, later so if I have to take it apart or something or somebody has to get back into it I don't want this thing to be destroyed now what's kind of getting to me here is you'll recall when I laid this out I was talking about how this has to match up and there's some different heights and I wanted to use this bridge and this floating bridge um, so what I did was you'll recall that I had to cut this out so this would slip out like that you see that but unfortunately with that comes that gap right there and you'll recall the episode called pocket protector I'm going to give you a link to it right up there right about now we came up with this gadget right here to reinforce the pocket now the issue is here you can see that this is empty down in here and if I screw the top of the box to this that's still going to leave this unreinforced so I've cut a couple pieces of wood that we're going to be able to block up this uh, neck so it pushes up on it, it gives it some support in that way when we mount everything I'm going to show you how I did that and it's really simple so what I want to do is I want to put a piece of wood under here or a couple pieces that make it snug. I don't want to push it up too hard or down too hard and collapse the bottom of this box even though it's reinforced. Now you'll notice here that these pillar blocks that I put in to support, you reach around the camera here, these are ultimately going to be what holds the top of the box on. And so they'll screw down to these pillar blocks. I had to put the pillar blocks in the back sideways again for, for the jacks, for the pickups. But this is kind of tricky. And once I do this, whatever I'm going to do, this is kind of a way to work yourself into a corner. So if I cut a piece of wood like this, it's just long enough for the box. If you look at it, this is stopping me from getting it in this way and there's really no way to do it. It's kind of like a Rubik's Cube except there is no answer. So I do need to break up the wood where there's some room to work here. So I come in off the middle, I cut two pieces of neck wood cut off. They're not going to be thick enough. But I found another piece of wood and the combination of these allows me to number one slip this one in like so okay and then can you see it's in there like that and then I just take one of these slip it underneath again it helps to have some room here because these are cut down and I slip that in under there and slip it all the way forward like that and line everything up like so. Can you see that? Now, it doesn't matter to me that this is sticking out a little bit more than the neck. That's okay. It gives it support. Now, when I go to put, let's flip this around. When I go to put this on, I'm going to have things to screw into and it's going to be solid like that. Let me show you a little bit about how I did these blocks. It's pretty simple. After one, I took one of these and cut it down where I've got enough to fit in the box uh, with a gap about that much and this it really didn't matter whatever I had but between the two of these they were a little bit thick so what I did was I took them on the belt sander uh, I'm not going to turn it on and give you a bunch of noise but I just basically ground sanded them down did the same thing here. You want to be really careful with these because if you get off to the side over here, what happens is this grabs and the next thing you know, your fingernails are pulled back. So you want to stay away from the sides. You also want to stay away from this area down here because it indents. But you're just in here nice and flat. I'm going to tell you something. If you take one of these and it's meant for cleaning your belt, if you keep your belt clean um, before you start doing this, you're going to see what's picking up on the belt. It's going to give you an indicator as to whether or not something is being taken off and how much. is. It. So it's a good indicator. So I'm going to turn this on for a second and show you how this works. You just simply hold this. It's for, again, cleaning off the belt. So we just kick on the belt sander. Hold this down here like this.
One more time in the background over there is canned heat, refried boogie. So I've already got the one in here, and that's stiffened that up quite a bit. Now I'm going to take the other one, put it in there like so. Get it off to the side, put this one in. Drop that one down, put them on each other, and then line them up. Now they're snug, but they're not so tight that they're pressing down the bottom of the box. I, But that's kind of what it looks like. You see that in there? It's nothing pretty, but nobody's going to see it once the top of the box is on. Now there's a couple of things I need to think about here because I'm actually going to drill a couple of holes here to put this, uh, to hold this on like this. And the, the screws are going to be long enough that they not only go into here, but they're going to go all the way down into at least the second board. Um, I'll probably put a tad bit of glue on the bottom between the wider um, spacer and this spacer to keep those together before it's all over. But I want to screw these down here. There's a couple of things I want to remember. This is going to be about in this position, so it only makes sense that I put one set of screws here and one set of screws here. Now, I want there to be two screws. Uh, they need to be uh, the right distance between here so they catch the neck board. So we know that the neck board is right underneath here. We know that. So we can simply take a straight edge. We're going to take this stuff out of the way. But I'm going to point out here that where I'm going to want these screws, let me pull this out of the way, um, where I'm going to want these two screws is certainly not going to be a spot on top of the piezo where I drill through those. But we can see here that if I line up with this O on OWL and put them there, it will be out of the way and I can still mount this flat humbucker um, in the bridge position where it needs to be. Likewise, I'm going to want to put the other two screws up in this area somewhere. So I'm going to use a straight edge and a couple of clamps and remember our handy gadget that tells us on a three string where the middle is of the neck and where the other string should go. We're going to uh, bring this back into play now. So I've got a straight edge here. Yeah, the one with millimeters. There you go, metric hater. And these ratchet clamps, which I really like. I'm going to pop that down. And that gives me a straight edge. It shows me where the outside, see I can just slide like this, and it shows me where the outside of the neck board is. See? Because this and this line up. It's a through board. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and come over to where the O is. See that O right there? I'm going to line it up right there. And I'm going to make a mark a little bit more right about there and right about there. And I'm going to come up here and in this area right about here I'm going to do the same thing like so. And because this edge is straight and because I've got this lined up I know to put my hole right there, right there, there, and there. All right, so I'm taking the clamp off. I'm going to put this back on for a second. This right there, make sure everything's lined up that way. And I'm going to pay attention to where these are by slipping these off of here. And look, I'm right there and right there, right there and right there, so I'm not going to hit anything. So I'm going to put this on, make sure it's lined up where it needs to be, and drill pilot holes there and there. Now, as always, uh, rather than put the bit on here and start worming around and have, having everything messed up, I'm going to take my awl and I'm going to find my hole. I'm going to tap a little bit. Again, I don't want to smack the hell out of this because I can end up cratering this old box and until everything comes together, um, I don't want to do that. So I've got those four holes right there right there. So now I'm just going to pull into here. I'm 
There we go. We'll pull that off. There we go. Everything lined up. Now, what I'm going to want to do is make sure that this one's straight underneath here. And I want to measure to make sure that this is going to go all the way down into that second board. Like so. I'm going to do that with the other three holes. No sense. You being bored watching that. So there's the four holes. I've taken the top off. Holes are there. Nothing's in the way here. Everything's going to be cleared. Um, now when I put the box back on, since these screws, let me grab one. I could have been a little bit more prepared. But see these? They're rounded off here. I don't want that sticking up here to get in the way because this is where everybody's going to be playing this thing. So what I want to do is I want to take my countersink tool and just touch this. You want to be really careful with this because that's an old box. It doesn't take much more than that. You can always go back, but you can't put stuff back on with these boxes. So now, when I, let's just keep yapping while I do this. Put the bit back in, like so. Now when I run this in, like so. I'm going to watch my torque very carefully. Now when it gets down to the end, I am not going to run it in until the clutch kicks out. But what I am going to do is I can turn it straight. That has to be straight or the universe won't line up. But there you go. And that makes it a lot more solid. And we're good to go. Now, I'll go ahead and do the rest of these and get the right stuff. So while I'm working on this in the future, I can take this off, but I kind of want to touch back on Alan Wilson. What happened to my book here? There it is. Alan Wilson um, basically picked up a guitar and started listening to really old blues records um, that his friends had, and he got a few. But... Um, Anyway, he got really, really good. I'm going to leave this here so you can remember what he looks like. He got really good at mimicking, uh, especially the old, that's a nice marble, isn't it? The old um, blues players that played slide guitar. Hey, Troy Murrow, thanks for trying this out at, at your last concert. Um, good for you. I got some footage of that, and I'll share that in the future. But these pieces of wood right here represent something. Uh, this came, this little piece of wood, there was a, uh, an episode about relics. I don't know how many cards I've left. It'll be up there. Click on the eye or hover your mouse up there and it'll pull it down. There's something about embedding relics. This little piece of wood right here came from the property that Alan Wilson died on on Topanga Canyon outside of Los Angeles a little bit. Um, and... Alan Wilson was instrumental in when Sun House was rediscovered in Rochester, New York. Uh, John Fahey was there. David Evans was there. And some of these college kids that were really responsible for bringing the blues back. These aren't record companies uh, and things like that. But my friend George Mitchell also can't leave him out. Um, they were the next step after Alan Lomax. Anyway, this piece of wood came from there. And it's significant to me because... Alan Wilson, when they discovered Sun House, he would pretty much forgot how to play his own music. But Alan Wilson had listened to him enough where he could play it. He basically sat down with Sun House and a couple of others, these other people for a couple of weeks and retaught Sun House how to play his own music. Now, Sun House had picked up some of his slide guitar stunts from a guy named Reuben Lacey, who ended up being a reverend in Ridgecrest, um, California, at a church up there and this piece of wood right here came from uh, the can dump behind Reuben Lacey's church in Ridgecrest. Um, this piece of wood came from the house where or the property where um, Mississippi Fred McDowell was recorded by both Alan Lomax and George Mitchell so you got a lot going on here. Um, this is a good book. Um, it's interesting enough there's uh, some Rebecca Davis doesn't take too much um, privilege in 
trying to figure out what happened, but just basically sticks with what we know. So um, that piece of wood's important. It's going into this guitar. I hope it adds something to it. And um, I always like introducing this kind of stuff, history, into my episode. So we're going to get this tied up finally. And um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you next time.